Hello, this is Ryan doing a video garden tour of a permaculture styled, permaculture themed garden in Colorado Springs that me and Ayada Madeira have been working on here for a couple years. So now Ayada Madeira here is going to be giving us a tour and explaining what we're doing over here. Alright, welcome folks. Um... We started here with some pretty rough soil. You can kind of see right here. It's it's kind of like red rock dust because we're near the Garden of the Gods. And so we really had to do a lot to build up the soil. So come on in. Um, Maybe raised beds, not all the best materials, but it's all reclaimed stuff. You know, it's gardening on a shoestring. Huh. And um, this was the original part of the garden, just this section, and, and there were no raised beds. So I just got bits and pieces of wood that I was able to salvage and create these beds and started building up the soil. And so you can see a variety of greens here, um, some which have self-seeded, which are great, and others which have been intentionally planted. Now this area will get shade from the um, big elm tree over here, which actually helps for the greens. Um, then we went and expanded over to this area and again, it was pretty, really rough soil, so it, it took time to build up. We've, ha we've struggled with insect problems. Um, as we have amended the beds, it became more interesting to the insects to help um, break down, shred that material, which is good, but they also shred the plants. So <laughs> we've had our challenges, but we keep going. Um, this bed has a bunch of basil. Oh. We're trying to protect um, some of these beds from hail because we really get hail here in the north, um, the front range of the Rockies, and it could just wipe things out. It has in the past. I mean, last year three times hail. So this side over here is the newest. Um, well, actually, we had squash here last year, and this year we have a tomato plants, and you can see we put a hail netting over that. We still want squash, so we keep trying to, we keep stretching the garden to go out a bit. And the squash is up in, in this area, which is a chicken run overflow from this portion, which is um, really the chicken's original place. So indoors, uh, in this shed is, is where the chickens actually roost. Um, they're little guys, little girls actually. Um, there's eight of them and um, they are probably about a month to six weeks old and inside is their um, evening time rest we'll actually put a shade cloth over on this because it gets pretty warm um, in the midday here's another bit of a covered place um, what we try to do is not only protect from the hail but there's a pl few places we're going to try to overwinter um, stuff. Last year we were kind of successful in, in a different location which we may go by. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll give a tour about the other parts of the garden after this part. Yeah, there's, this is only the first part. Um, and uh, when the sun is out it's pretty harsh so we're protecting this little lettuce plant that volunteered in this place. Oh, do you have any examples of, you showed the soil where we started. Can you, oh. Do you have any soil that you could uh, show sure. here that you haven't planted in yet? Sure, let's see. Most of this has been planted, but I can um, maybe grab a handful. Oh, we'll need a handful, just like, um, yeah, yeah, just yeah, stick it so, up a little bit. Right, so at first you saw that it was pretty red, and now because of the amendment and working of it, we've got more organic material, um, worms, See, there's like a little red wiggler there. And it's amazing what kind of life will just come in on its own if you create the conditions for it. So we're gonna take you out to the other side of the garden. All right, so we're gonna take a cut here and then we'll start the video again over to the west side of the garden and see you over there. Okay, so here we are at the east part of the garden. That's where we were, and this is where we're going to show you next. Alrighty. Going into the western side of the garden. Um, this side of the garden was started a couple years after that, um, so it's 
it's newer. Um, this cat was left a little bit wild. We have a lot of comfrey. We like comfrey because it's so useful as a biodynamic accumulator, pilks up the nutrients from the soil. We can chop and drop, we can lay it everywhere. It looks like it's taking over, but we really don't mind. And behind here is nettles. Again, something most people wouldn't have, but we know the value, not only for eating and medicinal purposes, but for the soil, for compost. Um, this area is a herb and, herb and flower garden. It was actually created on the um, around the foundation of an old house, which burned down. And we wonder whether the soil is having difficulties because of that reason. It's a challenging place. Um, this part is new last year. So this is actually second season. We've got the hail netting over, hoping to save these plants in case of hail. And under each of these, we call covered wagons, we have a variety of things like kale and, and chard and peppers, um, of course, some comfrey in there as well. And again, here, basil, chars, eggplant, um, a variety of things. And in here, some green onions. Um, probably too much to, to say everything. But another covered wagon bed. Um, Nothing yeah, too much pretty, going in there. Everything's yes. pretty young. Um, I was given this box. It was a shipping container for uh, something. Potatoes, <laughs> maybe? I'm not sure what it was a shipping container. Apples, apples, that's it. And so we're using that inside here. We have some peppers and basil. Things that like it warm because um, if it ever got cold, we can put these plastic pieces on top and kind of keep them down a little bit with this string. Um, but we've got to be really careful because the sun and comes out of the clouds and you can bake this stuff really bad, um, quickly, very quickly. And uh, then it gets cold and this weather is just so variable. So it's kind of a challenging place to garden. Uh, let's see, I'll come around here and we'll take a uh, look at the, um, labyrinth area. Now this is an area that is meant to be somewhat contemplative as well with flowers and herbs and uh, walking. So one could come in to the labyrinth here, walk around, basically snake around the entire garden on this side and continue. But this soil was just like the rest. It was all this rock, red rock dust stuff. So um, what I did was just to basically take a lot of wood chips and horse manure from uh, local stables and just raked it into these uh, areas and put the rocks around them to help define it. So that's basically what it is. And what we're doing is we're growing things that are gonna build the soil. Our intention right now is not to grow um, edible food here right now. So this is buckwheat on the middle, comfrey. I put in a few bean seeds, they haven't come up. You know, beans being a good good one for fixing nitrogen. And so that's the whole purpose of this, is, is to build the soil. Why well, don't you tell them about the few uh, annual uh, edibles that you got going on over here? Like the berries and the trees. Oh, okay, well these are perennials, these are elderberry bushes, and um, we're happy to see them grow well. A deer got in and munched them down to the ground, but they, they came back, fortunately. We've used this netting around the perimeter. It was um, given to us. It looks like something from a golf course or a padding cage. It's kind of funky, but, you know, again, we use what we can. Um, we're 